The iPhone XR will be officially released as of tomorrow, and while this phone might seem different and new for Apple with its variety of colors and lower price tag, it's all been done before. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and today we're going to be talking about Apple's newest iPhone, the iPhone 5C Reborn. <laughs> September 2013. The iPhone 5C is released to mixed reviews, with one common sentiment being used all too often. Why does the 5C exist? The iPhone 5C was simply a plastic version of the iPhone 5 which came out the year before and was significantly worse than the 5S the iPhone released alongside it. Needless to say, the iPhone 5C is probably Apple's biggest failure to date, or at least when it comes to iPhones. It didn't sell well relative to Apple's expectations and was probably the first pointless phone they had ever released. And yet here we are five years later and the iPhone 5C has been essentially reincarnated in the form of the iPhone XR. I've been asked by a fair few people who don't know anything about tech what this new iPhone is all about. Didn't one just come out? And how I describe it is always the same. I say, you remember the iPhone 5C a few years back? You remember it was kind of colorful and plastic? And usually they do remember. Well, I say this is pretty much the same thing, except this phone is actually kind of good. The iPhone XR's initial reviews have been pretty positive, much to the dismay of the vocal minority of people who don't understand the difference between pixel density and screen resolution. There's a constant recurring theme in each review, and that's that this is the best iPhone for most people to buy. And the reason for that is because this phone is essentially the XS, except with a lower quality display, at a full $250 less than the XS. When the iPhone 5C came out, it was seen as a budget phone, but it really wasn't, and that's where things start to go wrong. And here we are now, the iPhone XR is also being seen as a budget phone, but I don't think anything's going to be going wrong. Let me explain. Apple marketed the 5C as being the more creative and colorful option, but the problem with that is that these phrases really mean nothing and aren't enough substance to draw in very many buyers. Sure, it appealed to some people, but not a large portion of the market. The plastic on the phone gave the impression that the device was cheap, but people don't buy Apple to save money. If you're buying an iPhone, you know that you're paying a premium that typically isn't required with Android phones. You're paying for, you know, extra support, better updates, that kind of thing. And so iPhones aren't usually looked at as budget devices. That said, appealing to budget-minded users is something Apple has actually managed to do since the 5C with the iPhone SE, as it came in at only $450 at first and later $350 and was a great little phone for a lot of people. That was the go-to phone, and I think the XR is going to take its place, even if everyone isn't terribly happy with that because it's a bigger phone. So when it comes to appealing to budget users, Apple has done it before, but the iPhone 5C was the worst possible way to do it. If you're going to have a device that is at least somewhat supposed to appeal to those who, again, don't have a lot of money to spend, you need to have a price to match that initiative, and Apple didn't. Now, you're saying, well, the iPhone XR doesn't have a price to match budget users. It's $750, and that's that's fair, but you gotta keep in mind, again, iPhones cost $1,000 now, that's just the way they are. So $750 is better than what the 5C costed, even though the 5C costed less. And the reason is, is that the 5C was only $100 less than the premium 5S. And so who in their right mind would buy the 5C? It was slower, had a worse camera, had no touch ID, and worst of all was plastic. And plastic in the mind of consumers is cheap, but the price wasn't cheap, at least not really compared to the 5S. And while the 5 5C was colorful, that was also a problem for some people because the only kind of muted color was white and not everyone wants to have pink and yellow and blue and green. Some people just like to have the more premium looking white or black and the 5C didn't really have that. Again, it had white, but it still didn't look great. But the iPhone XR is writing almost every wrong the 5C committed. We've got a premium design with a glass back just like the XS and therefore the phone doesn't feel cheap. The XR has a lot of color variety, but it also has your typical black and white, so if you're wanting that, then you're covered. It isn't any slower than the 
SNES with the A12 chipset, and while it does have less RAM, you'll be hard pressed to notice the difference in real life use, at least for now. The camera is exactly the same as the 10s except for the extra telephoto lens that honestly a lot of people don't really use. We still have portrait mode just done with AI, and the early photo examples look really good. We have Face ID still, as well as the same selfie camera. We do have a worse display, but one that'll look basically the same as the iPhone 8s. If you're coming from any iPhone other than the 10, you will almost definitely not care about the lower quality. And it's not even that the display is low quality, it's just lower than the 10s's. The pixel density still makes it so the screen looks pretty good. And if you don't believe me and still refuse to listen to reason, just go to your local Best Buy or wherever and try the 10R. I highly doubt you'll be able to honestly say the screen looks bad in person, because it doesn't. The iPhone 10R is basically the complete package, and you can get all this at only $750. That's $50 less than the smaller Pixel 3. And if you really can't stand what you're losing, then just go up to the 10s at a thousand. No one's stopping you. For the average Joe, this is the perfect phone at a very good price point, at least as far as iPhones go. Again, $750 might seem absurd to you for this phone, but keep in mind, the alternative is a thousand dollars, and you're really not losing much by getting the 10R, which makes this a good value. But the 5C was none of this. It was overpriced for not really anything special. Again, it was just the 5 in the plastic shell. The 10R is a legitimate upgrade over last year's iPhone 8, and shouldn't be underestimated. I wouldn't be surprised if the iPhone 10R sold out the 10s. It's something people are really going to latch onto with that lower price tag, and it'll be the perfect device to upgrade to when you're coming from the iPhone 6, 6s, SE, and so on. It isn't going to be right for everybody, and that's why the 10s exists, but for the most part, I'd say this is really a great phone, and I can't wait to actually try it out for myself. The iPhone 10R is not only the rebirth of the 5C, but really the 5C done right. There are a lot of parallels between the two phones. The iPhone 5 was discontinued for the 5C, and the 10 was discontinued this year. But at the end of the day, the difference between the two phones is that the 10R is actually an attractive option that brings more features than compromises, and I'm excited to see where things go from here. Now, I'm not trying to just blast the iPhone 5C, by the way. It was a good phone, but it was a good phone because it was basically just the iPhone 5. It just should have brought a lot more than it did, and, well, Apple got hurt in sales because of it. In short, don't overlook the iPhone XR just because it's similar in nature to the 5C. I think the XR will be a lot of things, but a commercial failure is not one of them. And with that, I think I'm done here. If you found this a video interesting, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram if you want some more tech in your life, links below. And with that all being said, I'm Josh from 91Tech, and I will see you all next time.